this is Dan's Eric. It is still the 4th of July, 2011. Uh, I'm really being brave being out right now because of all the fireworks. I mean, poor Yeston's yes, still in pain. I can feel it. I'm just waiting until I get that bad where I start feeling the pain. Anyway, uh, this is part two of our hospitalizations and school of the like rant. Um, this will be going into detail about our second hospitalization. Um, this was a year later from the first one in 09. Um, and what's ironic about this one is we wanted to go in for this one and it turned out to be a disaster. Um, Brittany basically wanted to commit suicide. And Hill Eric offered to complete it for her because that, that's how he died. He, um, and this might trigger some people, stabbed himself in the stomach and bled to death. Um, so he was trying to come out and do that to the body. And we were literally holding him back inside. The only thing he was able to shed was his tail coat. Um, we kept a good hold on him. And I came out and I went up to Sharon, Brittany's grandmother, and said, we need to go to the hospital. Hill Eric is trying to come out and kill everybody. And she took us. And, um, you know, we got evaluated and they asked, you know, that familiar question again, do you see or hear things that aren't there? And I wisely said no, and I felt like I was lying. But a dear friend of ours, and you know who you are when you watch this, said that it's not a lie in all technicality because we are here. And I, I do agree with what she said. So, um, you know, we, um, they basically put us in the hospital right away. Um, at least from what I can remember. And at first it went well. Um, we told one of the staff members about us. I think it might have been Yeston who did so. And she said, okay, well just let me know who's out. And you know. And um, then during outside time, I went up to this particular staff member and I said, hello, my name is Dan Zarek. And she made a remark like, I don't even know what it was, but something about, oh, I don't want to hear it. I want to, you know, play along with this game. And we're just like, what? And, um, so, uh, and then my, uh, wife was out once doing something in group and the therapist we had a new therapist this time came and got her and they said are you Brittany and she says no I'm dance Christine and they said oh well, we'll talk to you when you're Brittany and they put her back at the room and then I will let Hill Eric to talk about this next part hello this is Hill um, eventually I freed myself from the others um, well, I was getting stronger at that point anyway, and it was room time, which is basically where we had to stay in our room for God knows how long, and Dan Sarek kept warning the staff at the front desk, Hill is really close to coming out, and it was kind of funny because all they did was ignore him the first couple of times, and then they put him in the quiet room with the door open. That is not going to stop me. And eventually I came out and I guess they were so used to seeing dance walk up to the front desk that I was actually able to get a bit past it before they knew it was me. I mean, and, and they had given dance a sedative of some sort too, um, but they picked me up literally and they put me back in the room and shut the door. And if you know me at all, I do not like being captive. I do not like feeling like I am weak and I pounded and bonked, banged on the door screaming my bloody head off. And eventually the sedative began to kick in and I felt very wary and ashamed of myself that I was weak. So I let uh, Roger out. 
and the lodger sat in the corner and waited until they said, are you ready to come out? And he just nodded. Uh, and after that, they proceeded to place us in permanent room time, which is basically um, what it is. Um, the only time you could come out of our room was for gym, basically, until we quote-unquote admitted that we were Brittany. And uh, what we did is we have animorphs here, basically, children who can turn into any animal they touch. And one of them, Jake, had acquired Brittany's DNA and just morphed Brittany. And that's what we got out of there, was doing what we always do and pretending we're Brittany. Which is not fair. And I will let Kay Eric out to talk about uh, this next part. Hello, the next, uh, the reason we were in the hospital in the first place, why Brittany wanted to commit suicide, is because of this therapist, Jeannie, that we talked about a couple of rants ago. Um, we were just sick and tired of her calling us Brittany all the time, and we just wanted it over, I guess, at least Brittany did, and the day before we got out of the hospital, they surprised us and said, Oh, well, Jeannie's coming to visit. We're just like, what? And then we knew this was a test, and we let Roger out, who really didn't have to deal with Jeannie, and he just sat there and played a good boy. And, you know, since Jeannie was going to be out of town, our first, of, well, our first day of being allowed to go home from the hospital, uh, our hospital therapist wanted to see us again, and we used to be addicted to, uh, well, I think you heard the story already, as a matter of fact, the stupid therapist who called me Brittany while moving and speaking differently. In fact, I know you heard this already, but um, that's where she came from. So all in all, that hospital experience wasn't too good. And that was part two of our hospital land.